CBDC can improve financial inclusion is through what we call programmability. That is, CBDC can allow government agencies and private sector players to program, to create smart contracts, to allow targeted policy functions. For example, welfare payment, for example, consumption coupon, for example, food stamp. By programming CBDC, those money can be precisely targeted for what kind of people can own and what kind of use this money can be utilized, for example, for food. So this potential programmability can help government agencies to precisely target their support to those people who need support. So that way can also improve financial inclusion. Stores come onto the platform. Retail then goes into a hodling mentality. And so we can see through our data that they aren't leaving our platform. They're just not trading. They trade a lot during up markets. They sit and hold during down markets. And so that is what's causing the difference in behavior. Institutions, they trade in good markets. They trade in bad markets. And the predominant customers on our platform right now that are trading are market makers. And so they're natural traders in these environments. We're adding a lot of new institutions. They are onboarding. They're not trading at the same volumes they were last year, but you can see they're onboarding and getting more and more prepared. We now have 25% of the top 100 hedge funds as customers. We're seeing big partnership names draw more interest as through the BlackRock partnership. So I think it's a coiling spring. I think that everyone's waiting for the market to turn and we're going to see a nice adoption. Baking. And that's participating on keeping these networks healthy. And we're seeing good adoption of that use case. We're starting to see the, the green shoots, and I refer to these as very nascent use cases around payments. We're seeing now as USDC gets adopted, it's 24-7. You can settle out your payments on Sunday. There's no reliance on the banking systems, especially for international payments. It has a more fast and efficient means of completing those payments. We are starting to see people use crypto on spending on their card. We see adoption on our payroll products. And so, yes, we're starting to see increasing what I would call more utility come into the system. I think what we see over the next five years, and we have a strong belief in, you're just going to see even more of that. You're going to see the development of Web3. We're really looking at gaming as probably the next frontier of what we'll see DeFi app development to be daily use cases. So it's starting. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And we have Coinbase CEO on CNBC, Alicia Haas. But guys, Coinbase lost $500 million and the stock was up today. What does this let us know? It is definitely a new road order stock. Looking towards the fourth industrial revolution. Anytime you can lose a half a billion and your stock moves up, we know the investors are looking 5, 10, 15 years down the road. And that's the reason why Kathy Woods keeps buying Coinbase. And the CFO bought up retail investors versus the institutional investors. The big money is still in. They're still trading. Not as much, but like she stated, they make money whether it goes up or down. The retail investor is sitting on the sideline hoping that they pick the right cryptos. And she stated that adoption is increasing. And we know that guys on a daily basis, but she talked about staking. She talked about payments and we know USDC is being integrated everywhere. And when you're talking about cross-border payments and regular payments, you're talking about instant settlement. And that's what the fourth industrial revolution is all about. Opening up all that liquidity. But first, before we can get to the fourth industrial revolution, what has to happen? We have Black Rocks. Rick talks about the Fed. The Fed has to shrink all this liquidity. They have to bring Americans to their knees because Americans are used to privacy, freedom. And we know the NWO doesn't want that. That's the reason why the emerging markets are leading us into the fourth industrial revolution, where they want the robots, algorithms, and drones to take over the economy and the sheep to go inside the metaverse. But first, they must have destroyed the U.S. world reserve currency and give China the dragon the rise. And remember, the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day.
there is a commitment here to over-tighten from this Federal Reserve. You know, Jonathan, I have to say, when you when you look at that press conference, that was the thing that blew me away. When you actually, listen, the Fed was too easy, too long. I think you, you've said it, we've said it on shows prior. You think about where we were in March, 0% funds rate and doing QE. And now we've got the, the, the most historic set of rate rises while draining liquidity. <clears throat> Gosh, I think over tightening, uh, while the chair talked about the ability to then come back and use his tools, I don't think that makes any sense. I think you've got to be, I mean, we've moved a historic amount. You see it in the housing market. I mean, boy, these are historic drops in terms of the, the rate of activity in the housing market. You'll see that in price flow through. You're going to start to see it in auto, auto finance. Clearly, you're seeing it today. Gosh, I think the Fed's got to be careful about, quote, over-tightening. Because when you think about what's happening, you have an economy that's operating in a pretty good place. You're closing the income gap. Wages are going to start to come down. That being said, they are they are offsetting an inflation shock. That is really important, particularly for lower and middle income consumers. So, listen, I think the Fed's got to be really careful about that comment about over tightening. I don't think we've got to keep veering the boat from one side to the other side. They've moved a lot. I think they I think quite frankly, I think the moves they've made have been brilliant this year. Going further to over tighten, I don't know. That that one was uh, was a bit was I thought a bit excessive. We're going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols? Who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1, King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2, King Yashua and Grandma It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. 
It's time to re-educate Generation Z.